Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to talk about the five reasons you should be upgrading your Google Workspace to Google Workspace Education Plus. So just a quick introduction. I'm Dan Taylor. I'm the founder of Apps Events. Hi, I'm James and I'm here based in Asia. Great. And we are Google partners. We're Google PD partners. We're also Google Workspace partners and we've been working for 10 years full time as Google partners with schools. So James, I guess, first of all, let's say what Google Workspace for Education Plus, it's a long winded way of saying it. Like, should we just quickly recap of what this version is and how this compares to the other versions? Yeah, I think it's important to remind people that G Suite, which is now Google Workspace and Google Workspace for Education Fundamentals, that's the free version that we already have access to. Yep. And that isn't going anywhere. Um, all of the features we're gonna talk today about uh, are additional features. Um, they are paid features, but they're all in, in addition to what is already available for free. Exactly. So don't worry. The free version is still free. It's almost the same as the old G Suite for education. There's just a slight restriction on, on storage of 100 terabytes per, per school. But apart from that, you have the basic features. But here's the but. A lot of these cool new features are going to be coming to Education Plus and Education Standard. So just quickly, um, education standard is a first level. Now this gives you all the security and admin tools. We're gonna to talk a little bit about them. So this just gives you the security and admin tools and this is a price per student. Education plus gives you all of the security and admin tools and all the teaching and learning tools. Whoop, hit my microphone. Um, now, if you just want the teaching and learning tools, there's something called the teaching and learning upgrade. Now this is a bit more complicated. It's priced per staff member. What I'd recommend if you go to appsevents.com forward slash calculator, we'll add a link to the bottom of the screen, appsevents.com forward slash calculator. You can look at the pricing in US dollars, in, in euros, in pounds. And remember, this is priced in a lot of currencies, a lot of Asian currencies, Taiwan dollars, um, Thai, Thai baht, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore dollars, uh, Swedish and, and Danish krona. So it's priced in a lot of, uh, a lot of different currencies as well as dollars, euros, and pounds. Yeah, and it is worth checking out if there is a pricing available in your local region because it may be advantageous for you to, to check out in that pricing. Yeah, get in touch. Anything, if you have any questions whatsoever, put us something in the comments or send us an email. Uh, we'll, we'll put a link to our emails at the end of this presentation, but get in touch with any questions whatsoever. So remember, just to recap, Education Standard gives you the uh, security and admin tools extra. Teaching and Learning Upgrade gives you the teaching and learning tools, which is Meet the Classroom. Education Plus gives you everything. It's the premium version. It means you get everything now and everything coming. And we believe it's the best version, and we've got five reasons why we think it is. So number one. Sorry, James. Jump in. I was going to start with number one, Dan. <laughs> let, me, let me lead off. <laughs> yeah, so number one, we were just talking about this earlier. Uh, I've been in Asia for a very long time, and schools have been closed for different reasons. Unfortunately, for coups here in Bangkok, for floods across the region, for pollution. You talk about um, uh, Northern America closing snow days, of course, um, across Northern Europe as well. There's a variety of different reasons that schools have closed in the past for, and there's really been no backup. Now, since, unfortunately, COVID has been um, spreading across the world in the last 12 months, um, schools have realized that they actually need a backup so that they can continue teaching and learning when the school is closed. Now, it sounds like um, sort of a hidden benefit of all of the disruption of the last year is that a lot of schools will have these backups in place in the future. And it does enable that learning to continue. So when we talk about uh, whether we're talking about the teaching and learning upgrade or the education plus upgrade, we're really talking about tools that enable a school to continue as they would normally, whether students are at home or in school, or in some, case, in some cases, some kind of a hybrid model. We've got a mixture of those two. Definitely. And, and you know, like in, in England, there's now uh, a, a, a regulation has come in that all schools have to be ready for remote learning. And the thing about having Education Plus is it really future-proofs you for remote teaching. Like you get all these meat features, which include you can record the lessons, you can have breakout rooms, better quality audio, polls, noise cancellation, a lot of these great tools. And you know, if, if you suddenly have to move to a hybrid situation or a, or a remote teaching situation, you, know, you don't wanna be caught um, you know, flat-footed and, and have a plan ready. And if you've got Education Plus, you've got these features ready to go, which is why we really believe it's a great thing for schools to have. Just one extra thing, you know, 
Google Meet, these features are, are really impressive, but they're not just for remote teaching. You know, you can use them for live streaming events across your school. You can bring in-person experts in to talk on sessions. You can, you know, if some people are at home, you can, you, there's some classes where you can actually record the lesson. You can have people in the classroom and people at home. So it's something, you know, these Meet tools are really useful even in an in-person situation with your school as well. Yeah, there's been schools doing graduation ceremonies, live streams through Meet, and um, obviously large staff events or parents' meetings even being live streamed in domain. If schools have, if schools happen to have accounts for their parents on their domain, they can actually live stream a Meet to parents in their domain. Yep. Okay, uh, rule number two, Google Classroom. Now, this is really the time, I believe, when Google Classroom is becoming a full learning management system, or, or VLE, as it's called in the UK, virtual learning environment. And there's a few reasons why. First of all, there's a bunch of add-ons. This is coming soon to Classroom. You need Education Plus to have this. There's a bunch of add-ons coming to Classroom from third party. There's stuff from Kahoot, Nearport, a bunch of other companies, and it's only going to be more and more. And they're going to be add-ons that integrate directly within Classroom, and it's only going to be available with Education Plus. So this is going to add a huge amount to your classroom experience. So just to visualize that, presumably what we're going to be able to do is when you create an assignment or a piece of coursework on Google Classroom, instead of just adding a doc or a spreadsheet or a slide deck, you can go ahead and add in Adobe Spark or IXL or Nearpod or wherever else externally your, your work may be happening. Yeah. Um, the next thing, which I think is potentially the, the biggest thing is, and this is coming very soon, is you can sync your rosters, your class rosters, to your student information system. So this means you can centrally push it out, automatically create all your classrooms, populate it with the students and the teachers, even the breakout rooms. So this is something where, you know, you're really getting the full functionality of a learning management system. And if you were kind of on the borderline of whether you were going to move from something like Schoology to Classroom, this could be the thing which could push you over. Yeah, and in addition to that, there are additional syncs. So you've got the something in the background is the Classroom API. There's going to be additional syncs between Google Classroom and external systems as well. Yeah. So all of that control. Definitely. Uh, another thing in terms of Classroom, originality reports. This is going to be included. It already is included, sorry, with Education Plus, Plagiarism Detector. You can check not only against all the published works, but you can also check against the internal library of all the stuff in your school as well, all the things other students have produced and teachers have produced. So Yeah, well, you can do, yeah, administrators, yeah, they can upload scans of documents directly into a school repository. Uh, only admins can do this, so presumably teachers would submit documents to give to an ad admin to upload to a repository, which is great. I mean, other, some schools use Turnitin or other services for this, but the advantage of it being an Edu Plus is it's one single service. You're getting all of this. I mean, Zoom has some fantastic features, as we know. We'll talk about we'll talk we talked about some of the Meet features. Turnitin is a fantastic service, but now you can have one service with all of that going on. You're not needing to sign into external services. You're not connecting there or anything like that. It's all within your domain. Definitely. Okay, number three, security and analytics tools. So this is something, if you're an admin, uh, or if you're any kind of tech director in the school, this is gonna be hugely interesting for you, but Education Plus has a bunch of security and analytics tools. Um, nothing really visual to show you here, but there's a really good security dashboard where you can have a full picture of the security health of, of your Google Workspace and also how it's integrated with the other systems. You can look at file sharing, message delivery, spam, really good. You can get alerts, uh, suspicious logon attempts, really, really high-end uh, security tool, which is only available in this version. And sort of to give some context to that, because obviously administrators would be looking at these and, and less so teachers. But if you can imagine a student gets a phishing attempt um, on their school account and maybe they get a, a a refund offer or a check for some rich oil baron sending them a million dollars. That's sort of phishing email. What you can actually do, you can set up rules in the admin console so that you can search for particular strings of text. Or if you know that is happening, then you can search for all emails in the domain with that um, type of message. And then you can see who received them. And what you can actually do is you can block those messages before they're actually received by the end user. Yeah. Definitely. And on the analytics side, that's related to security. Uh, BigQuery, there's the ability to export data to BigQuery. And you can, and again, if you're a big school or maybe you're a district or a group of schools especially, you can do really 
um, really granular uh, analysis on all your data. So your data from Drive, you did it from Gmail and everywhere, uh, how people are using it. Um, and, and this, people are really, the early signs we've seen that people really love this feature. Yeah, again, a little bit of uh, explanation of what that looks like for non-SQL experts. So use a something called SQL to do those commands, to do the search. If you imagine an email message, we see an email message, it's got senders, it's got recipients, it's got a it's got a subject line, it's got a body. Well, in fact, an email message has hundreds of different little data points attached to it, whether it was received, wherever it was sent, what IP address it came from, and so on. All of those are actually being logged, and you can use BigQuery to search through those using SQL commands to search for those. And on yeah. top of that, what Google's allowed is for Data Studio, which is an analytics tool, you can create Data Studio, uh, data studio templates to visualize your data. So you don't need to go into BigQuery, but you can use these visual representations of that data, which would be understood better by a teaching staff or by school leadership, for example. Yeah. It's pretty cool if you're a data nerd. <laughs> exactly, like James is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so another thing, also security and analytics tools we've talked about, admin tools, again, relevant if you're um, an IT manager, tech director, or a techie person. There's a lot of really good admin tools, uh, really good meaning, really highest level. One of the main ones you might be interested in is data regions. This gives you the ability to say, I want our data to be stored in the European Union, in the US and other regions, um, which is a tool that many people want. Uh, even though with GDPR, you don't necessarily have to have it in the EU. A lot of people want to because they think the rules could be changing. So uh, anything on data regions, James, from your point? Yeah, just a quick, just for now, quick clarification. It's only going to be the US and Europe that you can choose between. And it's only um, applying to data in the core applications as well. Yeah. The data but regions. All are regions to. are coming. The UK is going to be yep. there and lots of ones are, are yep. coming very soon. Uh, anything else exactly. on admin tools, James? Uh, we're going to talk quickly about context aware access. Context aware yep. access, uh, what that means is if you're logging in, if you're logging in with a device from school, it's going to recognize you're in school and give you access to everything. If you are outside of school, perhaps you take your advice, your device. <laughs> On holiday and you're, you're away um, in Australia, for example, and the school doesn't want you to access specific things on, on your domain. Perhaps, perhaps, for example, they don't want you to access Google Drive on your domain. It would detect that you're in Australia and um, dependent on the setting that the school applies to the domain, they could actually block your access to Google Drive. Yep. And that's what context-aware access essentially means. There's lots of more in-depth controls there, but a very, very High level, that's that's what it would mean. Great. So the final point, number five, is we believe it's the best value for money of all the paid versions. So just to give you a quick recap, um, if we talk in dollars, I mean, again, the pricing varies depending on your currency. Um, but if you talk in dollars, you get education standard is $3 uh, per student per year. And Education Plus is only $5. So with Education Standard, you just get the security and the admin features. You don't get any of the teaching and learning. But with Plus, remember, you get teaching, learning, and security and admin. So for an extra $2, I think that differential makes it a much more attractive price for schools. Yeah, and of course, don't forget, for every four student licenses for Education Plus, you're getting one free faculty license. Yes, exactly. So remember that. Yeah, essentially, for, for almost everybody, for almost everybody, you will your teacher to student ratio won't be a problem. So you pay for your students, and you're going to get all your teachers. You know, there's very few schools have more than one teacher for every four, four students. Um, yeah. So that really brings us to the end. It's a quick video. Um, James's email: james at appsevents.com. If you want to speak to me, down at appsevents.com. Um, get in touch with us. Let us know if you're interested in. Um, taking a look at this, we can give you a free trial, a free trial for two months for 50 users. So really comprehensive trial. We'll give you some free support. We'll help you get set up. We'll, we'll answer any questions. Um, now, this is only available through a partner. Obviously, Apps Events is a partner. You can use any of your favorite partners. We'd love you to, to, to use us. You know, we think we're the best in terms of our PD focus and, and our training, but you can use any partner to get this. And you can get a two-month trial again for 50 users. Yeah, just to add on there, actually, uh, talking about training, we've obviously done training globally now. Um, I forget how many countries it was back in, in 2019, but it was literally all across the globe. Um, and so bringing with that is our trainers have experienced in a vast variety of different curriculums and environments.
So if you've got any questions, not just about Google training, but about tech in general in, in schools, feel free to ask. Good. James, thank you very much. And thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks, everyone. Cheers, Dan.